The Challenge of the Yukon. King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, King, met that challenge. And justice ruled triumphant. Sergeant Preston and the great dog, King, had stopped for the night at Mark Willoughby's small cabin. Although it was close to the time when spring would come to the North Country, winter still held the land in an icy grasp that would be broken only when the Chinook wind swept across it to free lakes and rivers and the snowbound earth. With the wind whipping about the snug building, the warmth and comfort indoors were welcome to the Mountie, and he leaned back, tilting his chair as he looked about him. You know, Mart, a man could just stand in the doorway of this cabin and he'd know immediately the place had a woman right uh, there. That's so, eh? Well, I'll have you know I just put up a Julie's Fripperies to please the girl. Fine thing, I say, having drapes on the windows and everything. Mm Mm-hmm. You object, hmm? Much good it'd do me if I did. That girl does pretty much what she wants to. (laughs) Besides, she finds the time to spoil her old dad. What's that you're saying, Dad? He's just telling me what a good housekeeper you are, Julie. Oh, he is, is he? Well, he puts up an awful fuss, Sergeant. But I say that if you're going to live in this wilderness, you might as well make a home out of it. You've done a fine job. Go on, praise her. Praise her and flatter her, man. Don't you know she's hot enough to get along with anyway? Once her head's turned with a blit of flattery. <laughs> <laughs> He's like that all the time, Sergeant. But don't let him fool you. Yes. He really likes having the cabin fixed this way. Yes, glad I am that the sergeant's staying here tonight instead of with that old horse trader down the trail a bit. Bishop? Yeah, Bishop. Any man who swear by horses instead of dogs in a country like this ain't fit to associate with. Now, wait a minute, Mart. Simon's a pretty good chap. Hey, not in my estimation, he ain't. Unreasonable, stubborn curse. Can't talk sense into him no how. How a man figures to keep a pack of horses and refuses to have anything to do with dogs. Well, it's beyond me. Oh, sir, you're talking to a dog lover, Sergeant. You and me have a lot in common. But them bishops... Honestly, they... Sergeant, if this isn't the silliest sort of feud I ever heard of, they keep at it all the time when they're talking, which isn't even half of the time. Yeah. Jim and his father are both very nice. Well, that'll be enough out of you, girl. I'll have no daughter of mine sticking up for them that don't love, understand, or appreciate dogs. And you call Sime Bishop unreasonable. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> it uh, seems to me, Mart, there's a lot to be said for both of you. A lot of men keep horses up here and find them very useful. Yeah, well, I ain't one of them. I can't say I ever saw a horse that was worth the hair it took to feed them. That's my last word on it. Two grown men refusing to talk to each other practically because one loves horses and the other loves dogs. It couldn't happen anywhere but in the Yukon. Oh, you're right there. In a country as lonely as this is, small things have a tendency to be more irritating. You know, I've known men to live together in a cabin where they've been cut off from the rest of the world entirely. And invariably, before many months have passed, they've ceased speaking to each other. Oh, it's a terrible thing. Nothing terrible about it. Plain as a nose on Bishop's face. He's wrong, but he's too stubborn to admit it. Horses might be all right in that bluegrass country he comes from back in the United States. But every animal has its element. And horses just wasn't made for the Yukon. And the man that says they are is plain stupid. Well, now, who do you suppose that is? I'll see who it is, child. Can't imagine who'd be coming this time of night. Who it? Well, speak of the devil. Now, don't go getting any fool notions in that head of yours, Willoughby. Me and Jim heard the sergeant was staying at your cabin, and we dropped over to ask him to stop by at our place tomorrow for a few minutes. That's so, huh? Well, you can... Oh, you might as well come in out of the cold for a minute and tell him yourself, I guess. I ain't delivering any messages for you. How are you, Sam? Hello there, Jim. Hello, Hello Sergeant. Well, will you sit down for a few minutes? No, sir. I mean, ma'am. We didn't come over here looking for no hospitality. Oh, uh, Sergeant, 
You'll be hitting the trail tomorrow morning? Yes, that's right. Well, if you got the time, me and Jim would like to have you stop by for a few minutes. Seeing as how you kind of got off on the wrong track staying here. Of course, you come to it before you come to our place. So I can't say as I blame you much, but just to say... Well, look here, Sam Bishop, as long as you're in my house, I'll thank you to keep a civil tongue in your head. There's folks that are welcome in this house and them that ain't. Dad. And you don't have to get so high and mighty with me, you fish-drying kennel keeper. We ain't staying. And we won't miss you none when you leave. Now, just a minute, Mart. I think... We're, we're leaving, through. Sergeant. But like I said, me and Jim will be looking for you tomorrow. Good night, Mr. Bishop. Good uh, night, Jim. I'll Good see you in the morning, Sime. Well, Sergeant, I thought you was a man of more choosy company. Dad, you certainly didn't make them feel very welcome. Why should I? You heard what they called me, didn't you? Kennel keeper. I'll show that blacksmith who's right. Mark my words, I will. Horses in the Yukon. If you was a right-thinking daughter, you would have asked him to stay. Well, I guess I'll turn in. I hate to see two men as fine as you and Sime Bishop feuding over a difference of opinion, Mark. Yeah. Someday you might both need each other's help. <laughs> Not much I'll ever need his help. I'll put some oil in this other lamp for you, Sergeant. Just a minute. And uh, what do you think of the bishops, Julie? The younger one especially. The younger... Oh, you mean Jim. Well, I, uh, uh -huh. I don't think that... I thought so. You thought what, Sergeant? When Jim walked in here, he had eyes for only one person in this room. You're not so difficult to read yourself. Well, I don't know. Let's hope it all works out for the best. Next morning, Sergeant Preston left the small cabin, intending to stop for a short time at Simon Bishop's cabin, and then continue on into the country of the Yukon Indians. Meanwhile, life went on as usual for Mark Willoughby. He left his cabin early in the morning and worked almost till darkness, looking for the gold that had led thousands to the North Country. Well, it was mighty nice of you to stop for a minute, Jim. Yeah. Well, I was on my way to the cabin. I thought I would stop in to see Julie. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Mm, she is a very beautiful girl, Monsieur Willoughby. Uh, I think that young Jim Bishop thinks the same thing. And uh, the young man, you do not like him, huh? Like him? I ain't got time for neither one of them bishops. Neither does my daughter, for that matter. Look, well, look at that. Oh, you chose a wise spot this morning. Wise? Why, it's the best. Here, let me get some more of that there dirt. Oh, by golly, this place is full of it. I'm rich. Wait till Julie hears about it. Several hours later, Mark Willoughby was back at the cabin, excitedly getting ready for a trip to Seahorse City. So I took one look at it, and I said to myself, this is it. We're rich, Judy and me. Dad. Uh, uh, hand me my Mackinac, will you, Judy? Here you are. You said Pierre Bouchard was with you at the creek. Yes, yeah, so he was. Well, he came by here not 15 minutes before you got home, and he was heading towards town. Heading toward town? Why, he said he was going to stop by at the cabin to see you. Well, he didn't. And what's more, I watched him. He didn't take the turn in the trail to head out to his place. I tell you, he was going to see Horse City, Dad. And I don't like it. I don't like to think you're right. But then you can't trust nobody. Come on, Judy girl, we ain't wasting any time. <laughs> As Mark Willoughby and his daughter Julie approached Blackstone Creek, the old prospectors slowed the dogs. Farther up the creek, countless hundreds of men worked along the banks, seeking in the rich soil the gold that had been there for centuries. Below them, there was a widening in the creek where the silt from their sluicing operations 
had overflowed the whole creek bed, making a flat of quicksand about a quarter of a mile wide. That particular part of the country had been dotted with prospect holes, 12 to 14 feet deep, and the silt had covered everything so that it was impossible to know whether the apparently flat mud was a quarter of an inch deep or the depth of the deepest hole. Hey, easy there, you huskies. Dad, this is treachery. Yeah, you better get out of the sled. Be careful, Dad. Yeah. I'll try using this pole here. Going along like a blind man trying to see where it's safe to step. The dog! The dog's in the whole sled. They'll go under. Oh, Dad, stay away from me. Confound it. i got to do something. I can't stand here and watch my own team be swallowed up like there was nothing. Oh, we've got to get help. We... <laughs> Dad, look. <laughs> Somebody's coming. Oh, I sure hope they get here in time. <laughs> it's Sergeant Preston. Yeah, it's Sam Bishop. Hey, Sergeant. Okay, hold you, Mel. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. What's the trouble, Mike? Oh, it's my team. I lose him. My team and the gold that's under the tarp on the sled. The whole business is just... Sam, bring your horse over here. Hurry. Yeah. Sure. Acting quickly, the policeman fastened a rope to the sled that was trapped in the quicksand. The floundering dogs barking helplessly in the clutches of the mud that sucked at them. All right, son, get them moving. Get up, Bluegrass. Come on, fella. Get up there. Go on there. Get up, Bluegrass. More pull, son. It's coming. Get up there. All eyes were glued to the sled and dog team that were slowly pulled from the muddy and oozing death trap. As Mart watched, the realization gradually came to him that if it had not been for Syme's horse, his dogs, in which he had such pride, would have been swallowed up in the treacherous mud hole. And when he saw that the strong and willing horse had finally pulled his dog team to safety, he also realized that Syme's pride in his horses was not unfounded. Though at the moment he said nothing about it, he determined to make amends for his heretofore unreasonable actions toward the man whose horse had saved the dogs he loved. Yeah, they're all right. The dogs here all right. Well, sure they're all right, you old idiot. <laughs> they probably swallowed a powerful lot of mud. <laughs> oh, by golly, I sure am glad you came along. Jump and Jupiter, I never forgot. Hey, Sergeant, how about taking us into town? I gotta get to the city before that Pierre Bouchard beats me to the recorder's office. <laughs> time later, outside the claim recorder's office in Seahorse City. Mark Willoughby stood with a proud but somewhat sheepish expression on his face. Uh, that horse of yours did a mighty nice job of pulling my dogs out of that hole. You know, they'd, they'd be dead now if it wasn't for him, Sam. <coughs> yes, uh, and uh, Sergeant Preston's dog sure burned the wind getting you to town in time to beat Bouchard. <coughs> Good animals, uh, dogs. Oh, uh, concern it, man. Let's shake hands on that. <laughs> and say, I'll buy a round of drinks to the poolness horse I ever laid eyes on. Bluegrass. Julie, <laughs> I wonder if there's a minister in town. I don't know, Jim. Why? Well, while your father and mine are on speaking terms, we might as well take advantage of it. This way, they'll both be at the wedding. Oh, I see. A very good idea, Jim Bishop. Well, I'll be your go. <laughs> And you two better see the king and I get an invitation to the wedding. <laughs> yes, fellow. I think everything here is going to be all right for quite a while. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time. This is Jack McCarthy speaking. <laughs> <laughs>